We are back on Westby, Wisconsin. In today's video, we're trading in this grain train for another grain train. Ross Williams, he sent me, uh, he's made some John Deere mods in the past for 17 and he sent me some Brent gravity wagons, which pretty much all of our equipment is gonna be green. Like, it seems like every piece of equipment is green. I kinda wanna switch it up, but I mean, so far, there's been a lot of green mods out, so I gotta, I gotta kinda stick with green. They seem to be some of the best mods. Um, like these Brent gravity wagons, they're not deer. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that and stuff, but there's been a lot of green equipment out. So I apologize for anybody who wants red or orange or something like that. But man, like everybody keeps sending me these green, this green equipment and it's, and it's good. Nothing like <laughs> I'm just trying to, I, I want to switch it up a little bit, but like I said, everybody keeps sending me it. Also right before this stream or right before this, I accidentally like was thinking of, you know, what am I going to talk about this video kind of, and I accidentally hit the stream key. So literally people were like watching me just like talk to myself for like two minutes. I apologize about that if you were there. Like I literally got on. I wasn't even like looking at the camera and stuff and people already super chatted and stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. So, but, but seriously, thank you for jumping on the stream right, right away though. But no, that was an accidental stream. But farm equipment talk, we're getting a new, we're getting a baler. We don't have a baler yet and we're going to get a new baler right now along with gravity wagons this is going to cost me a lot of money a lot of money that i can't afford i'm curious to see how much these uh these gravity wagons sell for though if i could i don't know if i'll be able to trade them straight up with no cash involved i'll see i mean it'd be nice if i have cash coming my way but i doubt that's going to happen because we are upgrading gravity wagons um we need to find the sell point for these though you know what i may just sell them right here i may just sell them right here oh check this out so we have, so we have manual, manual attach. <laughs> there we go. So I gotta go around, detach every one of these. The only downfall of this is like the mod makes, makes this game not work. So what you can't do is I can't sprint, go forward and go to the left. I don't know, something about this mod. I can go to the right. Oh wait. Yeah, I just can't go to the left for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to sell these quick at the shop and then we got to make some hay bales. That's going to be the whole thing in this video. Also, uh, rooster modding sent me a new updated 4440, uh, mod, which should work better with some attachments. I was having some issues with that. Oh, $3,000. Okay. How much do the Brent gravity wagons cost? $20,000, $20,000 that I don't have. It does hold a ton more. You know what? I only need, dude, two Brent gravity wagons would be good. Check out this. Look how much they hold. Uh, yeah, two Brent gravity wagons would probably be good. It's just, it's a lot of money. And I don't really, okay, we're going to sell them just to upgrade. I was thinking about adding in money and stuff because I want to upgrade transfer equipment and stuff. Like I, I'm not going to run this like a farmer and keep my gravity wagons for literally 40 years on YouTube and stuff. Keep these and stuff. I'm not going to be that realistic, but, uh, We'll sell all these. So what? We got like $12,000 for it. Um, the nice thing is these gravity wagons do hold a lot more, which will help out a lot. What is, what's this over here? I think it's because I hit F4, F5. But <clears throat> what we're going to do is buy this six. Oh, okay, okay. I did hit that. There we go. We're going to buy this 644 Brant gravity wagon, which holds a ton more. 22,000, almost 23,000 liters. Oh, I only want to buy one of them, man. <laughs> to be honest, we only need two. Uh, we'll be good with two and I'll upgrade later for now. Hold on. There we go. We got that. And then I also have to buy a baler also for the horses. Once you get into livestock, it's just, it's expensive. Just getting the equipment right off the bat, of course. Um, but we're going to go buy a baler. Let's go into baling technology and there's John Deere baler and it makes, okay, 10 grand. Thank somebody saved me. There we go. So. John Deere 568 Baylor, and this is probably a lot more, brand new, but we're going to purchase this also. You know what? <laughs> I could I could probably pull this home behind these gravity wagons. Oh my gosh. Okay, I said I was going to go unrealistic with the last video, and I was going to pull the Baylor home with the gravity wagons. I mean, I I could pull this Baylor home, technically. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll probably come back and pick it up with a different tractor. Let's get these gravity wagons home, and then we'll get the baler home too. I'm actually going to save the game because I feel like it was just lagging right there. But we're going to hook up to these Brent gravity wagons quick. 
which have been converted. I think these were converted. There we go. Hook her up. That manual attach is kind of nice. I just, I got to substitute my key for some reason. It's this mod that doesn't allow me to sprint and go to the left. I don't know. So we will back up this other gravity wagon here. Okay. So this, let's see how this works. See, this is more like it. This is what I'm used to. The other gravity wagons were like, they tried to make it easier on you almost, which is nice and stuff. But this is, this is a lot tougher to back up. There we go. I'm just about close. And I can't tell when I'm there, to be honest. What I got to do? Let's come back here. Oh, gosh. Okay. There we go. We are now connected with these two. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hook up to that baler. And you know what? It's it's probably too unrealistic to hook up to that baler like that. It's just going to be... It's going to be too unrealistic. Now, this 8400 with the two Brent Graduate Wagons looks good. Perfect setup. And we do have a lot of weight behind us, so I'll probably be using the 8400 to pull these down the road. And it's our fastest tractor. Okay. We'll take a right, hit the road, and then I got to come back with a... I may take the pickup truck. Pickup truck pulling the baler. I think that might be the fastest... It's probably the fastest option uh, to do. So I'll go deliver the, these gravity wagons back and I'll see you guys when I get back. The 8400 chugging up the hill. I accidentally got this view right here. I was like, dang, that's kind of cool. It was cool, I guess. I was kind of seeing the cool scene. Like, I don't know, this view is pretty cool. 8400 chugging up there. And then one thing I noticed. Oh, did I turn? Uh, no, I have them here. But we have hazard lights on the back that actually work so the dmi gravity wagons they didn't have hazard lights at all and we do have extra it looks like extra mud flaps on the back wheels here which is kind of cool and stuff it's got the regular mud flaps but you can see down low it's got you know your other mud flaps i always think it's cool uh when trucks have like fairly long mud tracks mud, mud flaps that almost like touch the ground i don't know something about it i was wanting to get on my truck and stuff some like a little bit longer mud flaps I was like, nah, it's pretty much stock. I don't, and it doesn't have like any lift or anything. I don't, I don't need those and stuff, but I like the mud flaps on these. The extra extended ones make it look a lot better. Okay, stop sign. We got to take a lift and then we'll be back at the farm and then we'll hop in the, uh, the high boy and go pick up that baler. I was thinking about taking the 4440, but I was like, you know, high boy is going to get there a lot faster. seems like the last couple of episodes have literally just been run to the dealership or elevator and selling grain or training equipment. We haven't been much on the farm, so the the end of this episode, I'm going to try to get a ton on the farm. We're going to be working on the end of this. I'm probably not even going to show the part where I go and pick up this baler here. So as of right now, I'll probably put the gravity wagons right here, but I would like to get them under storage. They're brand new gravity wagons. You know, I'd like to get them in storage and not have them just placed outside, but it seems like this grass yard back here, pasture, has been turned into our storage. And I don't want that to happen, so I want to at least like, spread some stuff out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'll have to back in those at a later time, though. Here, let me uh, let me turn off these hazards here. So I'm gonna go pick up that baler. So here's where things get crazy, and I actually need a ton of help here, um, but the help's not gonna come. So right now we have—I totally forgot about this—but we have wheat stubble out there. That I don't know. I was thinking about putting a rake on and raking this up, but I don't know if the rake's gonna be wide enough to catch it and turn it into one row. Is it worth it? I'll, I'll try to do it quick. I'll run the rake over it. But by the time you run the rake over it, then you come back with the baler. What if you just made two passes with the baler? Because technically you made two passes with the equipment because you had to run the rake through it once. So is that really that efficient doing that? Because, right, you run one pass through to combine two win to combine two win win rows into one, and then you come back with the baler to bail it up. Well, what if you just had the baler bail one win row and then the baler bail the other windrow. I think it's pretty It's pretty much about the same. But since we have the rake here, I'll do it. Uh, why not, I guess. And usually, I guess you'd use the rake if you're like grabbing corn stalks or something like that. I think it'll reach out there to where it should be good, though. Um, the thing is, it's going to be a little tough getting this off the trailer. Uh, I, I have to dis disconnect the high boy anyway. So what we'll do, disconnect this guy and then hook the high boy up to the gooseneck quick. And then also, so this has PTO attachment, um, but obviously the truck doesn't have a PTO. Uh, oh, shoot. You have to keep it running? Um, hmm. 
hold on. I got an idea. There we go. So now it's manually only. Pull back here. Okay, I think it's because... What the heck? Uh, left control. Oh, it's left shift A. Okay, let's see if this works. I think it's because, yep, that's why it wasn't working. Nope. There, okay, there we go. We automatically did it. I got to figure this out a little better. So left shift A, both manually and inside. And I keep changing this on accident. Keep hitting the buttons. We want manual only. Okay, there we go. So what we'll do, pull over the gooseneck quick and uh, hook up to that and then unload. I guess, I mean, yeah, I probably should. It's going to be, I might have to edit this part out when I unload it. It's a little, it's a little tough to unload this. We'll pull over here and then I'll jump back here, reach over there, connect her. She's ready to rock and roll. Okay, the rake and the tether is unloaded. I'm going to shut off the high boy. We'll leave the high boy there. Okay, what tractor do we hook up to the rake? I got the 8400, 4440 is on the mower right now. I, Dude, honestly, 4440 would work perfect for literally everything we do with hay. It's just like, sorry for the squeak there, but it's just like you do, uh, it's just like you can't use the tractor for literally everything. I think we should switch it up a little bit. So I think what I'll do is go grab the 4755. It's out ripping in this field, actually. And here it is. I'll take off the duels, most likely. I'm just going to fold this ripper up quick. We'll put her kind of outside, I guess, in the yard storage, the place right beyond the shed where we put every single implement. I'm going to run this back, and then this, we haven't used a 4755 in a while. This will be a perfect raking tractor. I mean, it's a little a little overkill, but it'll work fine. Pull around here, and it's fun. It's a nice looking tractor, too. That's what I really like about it, also. Is that? Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, is that lowered in the ground, man? Hold on. Hold her up. There we go. Uh, no, no, no. Hold up. There we go. For some reason, it seemed like it was lowered in the ground. Oh, okay, so no, never mind. What it was, it was just the dust coming off the tire wheels. That's what it was. It looks like it's ripping part of the ground, though. Huh. And our tires are all dirty, and it's super unrealistic now. That's one thing that's kind of... It's one thing that, like, it's a little different, I guess. Uh, tires only get dirty, and it just makes things... It makes your mod, it makes your tractors look really weird with only the tires being dirty. So, uh, you know what? Ripper, we'll back in here quick. Chisel plow, I guess. There's a lot of different terms you could call it. Yeah, chisel plow is probably more appropriate. I'll just back her right up in here. Perfect. What do you guys like uh, mostly about watching these uh, these farm videos? I know personally, I like. Uh, Personally, I like all the mods we use, like the old school mods and stuff. I like the deer mods, the, I guess, r really American Midwest mods that we that we have and stuff, and the type of farm we have. What do you guys like uh, most about these videos? Uh, okay, so it's manual. There we go. Now we got that disconnected. It had hydraulic hoses also, which I don't know. Maybe someday we'll eventually have to manually uh, push those in and farm some. So now what I'll do, so we got the shop back here. Uh, okay, we got this shop right here. I'll take the duels, because you don't want the duels for the rake. So I'll take the duels off the, I know that's a little rough right there. Uh, but I'll take the duels off the 4755 quick. And then we'll hook her up to the rake. Customize, okay. Uh, dude, it'd be kind of cool. We don't need this much horsepower, honestly. It'd be kind of cool to switch this to like a 4555 or something like that. We'll just go standard. There we go. I always like the hub. I don't know why. The hub just like... Makes it look like main, you know, like spikes sticking out. But, I mean, in, in reality, it's not spikes sticking out. But it just makes the tractor look beefier, I guess. I don't know. I just like hubs on tractors. It's, I know. It's, it maybe it sounds weird or something. But it just looks good with the hub. So, we'll uh, connect to the rake here. And then I'll... I'm going to try to win... I'm going to try to... Uh, we'll try to win row those. Wait, dude, if I connect to the rake with a 4755, that means the only tractor left for the tether is the 8400, which is extreme overkill for uh, for that tether. Oh, okay, that was pretty cool. So that is hydraulic hoses go up there, and there's a three-point that leaves, uh, what is this connector piece called? Um, it's a lot of older tractors, especially. 
draw bar, I guess. A, a two-point draw bar is probably a good term, but that's kind of cool. So if you watch this, oh, yeah, this is uh, it's pretty cool. Hydraulic hose go up, and you get your three-point to two-point, like, that's, that's neat. That's neat. Um, I'm trying to think. So you could also, if you wanted to, you could raise this tongue up and down by using your three-point, which I don't know if people actually raise their three-point up and down if they have to. I, I don't know how that works, actually, on this, on this model. So, 4755 raking tractor. We'll pull out to the straw field here. Field here. Uh, I gotta figure out the best way over there. I hate cutting across grass and fields and stuff. Wouldn't be more realistic. It looks like this is one of the fastest ways out there. Okay, <laughs> here's the moment of truth. Some of these might not work the best. I'll pull in here quick. One, yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work actually. Yeah, it's not going to reach. What was I thinking? Maybe, wait, wait, maybe something like, nah, it, you know what? It, it's not even worth messing with. It's not going to reach that much. So we'll use this pretty much just for hay. What we'll do. It's not worth it at all. So I'm going to turn around here and then we'll go back and I guess what we got to do now is hook up to the tether to turn this to hay and then eventually rake it up. So we have the 4440 here. I think what I'm going to do hook her up and then drop the mower oh where's this gonna go i think what i'll do is i'll uh, if we can clear that i'll probably just put it in this this shed right here quick we got we should have room around here somewhere where i can toss this in oh actually what i'll have to do is i'll have to move the 8400 to put that in there darn we don't have much stuff to put some of these implements you know what i'm just gonna back in here there we go we'll just back in this old barn here this will work good and you know what? Some of this equipment, like a lot of this equipment, I could definitely leave outside. I don't have to be putting in sheds. It's just, if we got the space, we might as well put it in here. It's kind of my thought. There we go. We'll go back here. I wonder how this... Okay, so you got to go PTO. Then you got a detacher. There we go. It kind of drops the ground real awkward and stuff, but it's fine. Uh, and then we'll connect to the tether quick. <laughs> Manual... Honestly, just manually detach just makes it... A lot more realistic. I just have to get used to it yet. So we'll pull around, tether. I'm guessing this is, yeah. So what we'll have to do is first connect the three point, then connect the PTO, looks like. Uh, right there, perfect. Hop out, connector. And now you see those like three little dots there. Hit X and it'll connect the PTO. We are ready, rock and roll. <laughs> 4440, dude, it looks good. Looks good with the tether. And then, you know what? I actually have to hook up the loader. Uh, we'll probably... We gotta hook up the bailer or something, too. Yeah, dude, we have just equipment all over the place. Are we a little light? Light in the front, maybe? Huh. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll pull out here and start 10 this stuff. But also, we have so much more, like, grassland right now. We have an extreme amount of grassland, like, all over the place. And all I did is mow this area and i've been switching out attachments a lot what i should be doing is mowing everything and then switching out these attachments doing it all in one so like get all the mowing done and then get all the tedding done and then get all the raking done and then get all the bailing done that's what i should be doing but that's kind of neat so you can see it kind of moving back and forth there it's kind of just following us throughout here oh shoot i'm kind of all over the place but i will have to clean up this field a lot more Raking and tend is pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this 4440, she's going to get pretty dirty too. There we go. Follow her around. Yeah, that tether. Watch this back here. Oh, oh. so what it has is it has, looks like it has sway bars or something, which is extremely realistic. That kind of just let it float around back here almost. Watch this three point though. This three point's doing some weird stuff. And I've been hitting like rocks or something, and it just pops up. Like this tether will literally pop up once I get hit a rock. But the three point's been kind of moving up and down, and it's in float mode, I guess, is what it is. But it's kind of cool. It just allows this thing to just. Yep, there it is. There it is. It's like. I don't know if it's when I'm turning or something, but it just hits like. It'll hit a rock and then it'll jump up. Which, is that realistic, guys? It's pretty cool hearing these noises, too, coming out of the back. It sounds really realistic. There we go. She is done. She's complete. 
Uh, we got it done with the 4440. Now, I'll take the 4755 and start raking this up. The raking's a fun part too here. Let me, uh, okay, I gotta turn her off and we'll fold her up. I'll take the 4440, pull her over here. Now, I gotta figure out what tractor I want on the baler. Uh, I don't, you know what? It, honestly, I, what I, I think what I'll do is I'll take the duels off the 8400 and throw the 8400 on the baler just because, you know, it's definitely got the horsepower for it. But we're going to be using 4755 on the rake and 4440 on uh, the tether. And we're also going to use 4440 for loading and moving bales because it's the one that has a loader. So I don't want, so I want to kind of spread out usage a little bit. So that's what we'll do. We'll throw the 8400 on the baler there, which is a big tractor. Uh, it's it's a decent baler. It's it's definitely, it, it's a little overkill, but it'll, it'll work. It'll work good. So I'll start raking this up with 475. Raking, uh, raking's the fun part. Raking, raking's the fun part. We'll unfold her quick. Then turn her on. Well, she's on. That's right, it doesn't even have a feature where you turn it on, which is super realistic. You don't have to turn it on. You just drive past, the wheels start spinning, they're ground driven. It works good. Now, here's the only time you should zoom out because I hate when people zoom out like this, but it helps a ton when you're making hay. <laughs> it works so good when you zoom out like crazy, like sky view, like helicopter view up here. Bird, bird's eye, I guess. So what? We can do 11 mile an hour. We got a pretty, pretty wide width going here. So we'll, I'll be able to get this done fairly quick. Now the thing is, I don't know if I'm going to get bail in this video, guys. I think what I'm going to do is save bail in for next video. Uh, but this is like a three-man operation. If I had two other guys with me, we were rolling and stuff, we could get this done fairly quick. Me by myself takes a little bit longer. I know I shouldn't be complaining like a little crybaby and stuff because obviously I could have a lot of helpers. There's a lot of people who'd definitely or who'd hopefully be down to, be down to help. I make this turn. Swing wide. Oh, yeah, dude, we can swing tight with this. Even though it's front wheel assist, man, I was able to make that turn quick. That's why a lot of people, when they have a hay operation stuff, usually what they'll have is a two-wheel drive tractor just because you can turn tighter. Works great for mowing, stuff like that. Uh, but there, honestly, with that uh, with that front wheel assist, I was able to turn fairly tight, too. Okay, we got a little grass. I don't think we're going to... Is that going to rake up? Okay, it did rake up. But, yeah, we'll be getting this done quick. Every single tractor we have on the farm here, though, I, I enjoy. I enjoy using. It's not one that, like, I, I hate or anything. It's something that I'd keep around forever. We've got the 4440, 4755, and 8400. Favorite tractor is probably leaning towards the 4440, but but then 4755 or 8400, it's it's a, it's a tough. Oh, shoot, I'm missing a little bit. But it's a it's a tough choice there. I dude, honestly, I don't know. Uh, that's tough. I like them all. We got a we got a really good selection here. Oh, would you just look at those beautiful windrows? Nothing like a nice curved field with windrows. Oh, honestly, that looks awesome though. I'm just finishing up these edges, and I don't want it. I don't want to ruin these windrows at the same time, but I don't want my windrows to be in the middle of this field. And they're gonna have to. They're gonna be for a little bit. And then we got one. Well, we got one corn stalk just sticking through that windrow. But windrow is done. Every piece of equipment, honestly, no problem with tractors at all. At all. It works really good. 4755 works good with his Rhino wind rower, uh, or Coon wind rower. It's a Coon. Um, but anyways, everything works great with these. Next episode, what I'm going to do is take the 8400, put it on the baler, and start bailing this stuff up. Uh, we'll make bales. Okay, so we need... Oh, also, dude, we need straw bales, too. So I gotta make straw bales yet for these horses. For, horses? Dude, are they even... They're probably dead by now. Honestly, I haven't checked on the horses in forever. I've just been focusing on getting them feed, and I haven't even checked on them in forever. I need to I need to keep updated with them. Uh, oh, not doing too hot. But uh, we'll get them good to go. Once we get their... Once we get their stuff, we should... Once we get their feed, we'll be good to go. We, they need water also. That's one major thing that I gotta get them yet. But... Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And hey, as always, hopefully you have a fantastic day. I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching, guys.